Welcome to Haunted House Podcast. I'm Tegan Dawson, the Ghost Whisperer. This episode shares the ghost stories from Yulon. While it is a ghost town itself, I don't have as many as I have for previous towns, but I'm always looking for more. These stories are created using the internet, astral plane, and stories from people just like you. Send me an email or hit me up on the other socials. Anyway, let's start here. Firstly, the reason these stories are important to me is that ghosts were people once. It's fascinating to learn about how they lived, what they did. Their presence gives us a glimpse into the lives of regular people in these towns. You don't have to believe in ghosts to enjoy the narrative. Not all spectres are fearsome and angry. Some want to communicate. After all, they were people. It's not as though death steals our humanity. Usually the circumstances of our life or choices we make do that. And that's a different kind of story that haunts me. Before coal capture was placed in the power stations, coal particles rained down on the town. This reminds me of the fog rolling in and settling over London City, which are told in almost a romantic memory. The foghorn in the distance of the ships telling of the port they're coming in. The tales of mystery and mayhem that followed in the fog, including Jack the Ripper's stomping ground. Yulon, all too famous for particles in the air that in moist conditions held them suspended. It was a thick blanket of coal that came from the briquette factory before they had catches. The ground would get so thick in coal dust it would crunch beneath their feet. I guess that's why Yulon wasn't able to have a serial murderer of their own like Jack the Ripper. You'd hear him coming. But also, the town was set out better and didn't have as many crevices and corners to hide in. The women would clean the dust in the morning, and it would be back there before their husbands returned from work in the afternoon. Picnics for a time were almost impossible, as coal dust fell so heavily it covered food as well. The black, smoggy haze was a constant battle, up until 1945. The town was designed with grand ideals of equality, a great lifestyle for all workers. They had the best sporting fields. Surrounding sporting clubs would come and play finals in Yulon because of the quality. The theatre at the focal point of the main street hosted many plays. Yulon had songs written in honour of it and was multicultural before it was hip. Many people came from all over in search of work. The boulevard attracted two spirits that I'm aware of. A woman dressed in 1930s attire, wearing a bonnet, gazed across at the gardens eternally from an upstairs window. For all accounts and purposes, there was no major tragedy in that place that would cause her to stay on the promenade. Maybe she just wasn't ready to leave her lawn. A manly apparition dressed in Sunday best stood on the path in amongst the shoppers. There's no tragic reason he should be there. Maybe he believed Yulon was his idea of paradise. This could have even been Sir John Manish himself, who put his heart, soul, and kept his spirit in Yulon. Everyone loved Yulon, the living and the dead. There is a ghost that haunts the Latrobe Valley today. Some have said it was born to die. You probably think we're all born to die. With organic beings, this is true. This isn't an organic being. Did we have silicon beings in Lillotrope Valley? I don't know. You tell me. This ghost is the township of Yulon. It was beautifully engineered. A perfect garden city. The splendid blending of practicality with culture. Built in the 1920s, shortly after it was decided to mine the brown coal. Not only were the people in charge proud of this city, but the people who lived there worked very hard volunteering, making it even better. They had three sporting fields, and one of them was to Olympic quality. There were a great deal of good things about this town, and you can find out more about them at the old Brown Coal Mine Museum in Yulon North. In 1968, the SEC decided to shut it down and despite protests and a strong community movement to keep the town. By 1983, Yulon was a ghost town. 
The last residents recall it feeling eerie and far too quiet. They didn't want to leave. However, they watched as houses were trucked out of their streets, buildings pulled down. This quashed their resolve to stay and continue to fight. They had to leave and it haunted them. It continues to haunt the Latrobe Valley as coal seams travel all the way through. As a general rule, most of us don't think about our town's ending much. We just take it for granted that it won't happen and we'll be able to show our children where we grew up and the places we loved in our town. Even though brick buildings were dismantled and those bricks bearing the name of the town loaded onto trucks, all was not without a fight. One house staged a last stand all alone with no living residents. A worker involved in the demolition of the town after the residents were removed remembers a house that refused to come down. Each time they brought equipment to move it, they had equipment malfunctions. Workers got sick. Three times this happened, and they decided to leave it and work on other things for a while. Was a spirit protecting this house, causing machinery malfunctions to save its home? Continuing the fight from beyond the grave? Back before the Second World War, you could have seen your lawn's power stations, A, B, C and D. C sported 12 chimney stacks. The residents with a little imagination or insight would say ghostly forms appeared out of those stacks. There are plenty of reasons odd things may have manifested in the smoke above the power station. A great deal of workers lost their lives and explosions and workplace accidents. Some of the accidents were more mysterious or horrendous than others, and those are the ones we'll explore. One unfortunate soul was Frederick. He was an engineer able to turn the wet brown coal into briquettes to start the boilers. Frederick was brought in from Germany with his wife for this expertise. One day while working to bring a plant back online alongside two other men one was on top of the machine and the other was on the floor. Frederick was convinced the maintenance was completed. He pulled the knife switch. The machine erupted, throwing the door that landed on him. He was in surgery within minutes. However, the hemorrhaging was unable to be brought under control and he died. Frederick's work ethic was so strong his spirit returned to work. His spirit remains at the briquette factory. A building with the tallest chimney in the world, according to Frederick. To Frederick, he never did discover a US building with a chimney a further 30 feet in height. Long after the chimney fell, long after the building has been destroyed, Frederick works on the non-existent building. A side note, Yalorn Power Station employed German experts for many years, including through World War II. This caused some division in the community, especially during the war, as some wanted to see the German migrants locked up. It appears Yalorn did not do that. The Yalorn Administration Building later became a pub and motel. There are even rumours a brothel operated out of there. In the basement, there is an oppressive feeling as though one is being watched. I'm not sure what causes that. Stay tuned for more information as we discover this more. The Latrobe River had been dammed up to provide a swimming pool for the residents of the Ulawn. One summer, a young lad of nine was swimming at the pool when he didn't resurface. The people around him dived in to save him and were unable to revive him. The sight of the child, lifeless at the pool's edge, haunted them. Maybe someone felt his watery hand brush their leg in the water. Shortly after this, the people of Yulon fundraised for a new pool. It was the Olympic-sized swimming pool in Yulon. In 1927, floods in the area caused the Latrobe River to swell four times its normal size, including causing mayhem and making the mine shut down for a few days as they feared for the equipment. Due to excellent management, there was no loss of life. However, the miners lost 500 pounds in wages. Even cattle that had been shipped in from drought-affected areas were rescued. 
The electricity production wasn't affected either, due to a new open cut. But Jeff, a 20-year-old electrical tester, went missing. The police looked for him at the Latrobe River, even though they thought that was odd because he was a strong swimmer and regularly went swimming. They had found his clothing on the banks of the river. His father and mother lived separately in Sale. Jeff's father was an inmate at the Gippsland Hospital at the time. The police dragged the river and found his body near the power station. An electric train used to run through on a 900mm gauge track. It travelled between the Yalon Open Cup Power Station Briquette Station. Later it was extended to Morwell. Hugh, a cleaner of seven years at Yalon, was on his way to work at midnight. He was walking this night when he was run over by the electric train with a number of carriages in tow. He died instantly. Is he still trying to get to work or back home to his family? So those are all the stories that I have from Yalon. There is another ghost story around the same area though, well kind of, Colville. It's where black coal was found in Gippsland, on the other side of the Princess Highway. It was a home with two rooms. Rocks would come down the chimney. Their father would rush outside and find no one. One time they'd prepared a lamb and was hanging it to drain on a cool night. They'd had troubles draining animals before having believed other animals came and got them. So on this occasion, their dad had hooked it up so high on the veranda, he had to use a stepladder and you could not touch the bottom of the lamb without it. Even with all these precautions, the lamb still went missing. The rocks coming down the chimney became so dangerous the father reported it to the police, believing someone was roof rocking them. They would roll out of the burning fire and bounce in the room, threatening the family members. The police had no leads and there seemed to be no physical explanations for this. Their berry patch was also destroyed. <laughs> Marie, a listener, shared her paranormal experience while driving through the haunted hills. There were five people in the car when they set out that day. Her and her husband in the front and three children in the back. The trip had been rather uneventful. It was late. They'd had a full day when they reached the haunted hills in the rearview mirror. Something caught their eyes. A flash of movement. Like a child jumping from the back seat grabbing onto the passenger seat. A flash of movement like a child jumping from the back grabbing onto the passenger seat. Only no weight ever pulled and all their children knew better than to do that. Seat belts first. When Marie turned to look, her three children were asleep. But when she met her husband's eyes, she knew he'd seen the same thing she had. So this listener wrote in and informed me about a weird experience at Hearns Oak close to the high voltage power lines and the pines. This person is an avid bushwalker enjoying their time hiking with their dog. All that changed this day when this healthy active person was taking their dog for a short walk. The goal was to walk up a hill, a straight path near the high voltage power lines where they would be able to see the car for the entire time. On the way back down, Suddenly, they were no longer on the hill and couldn't see their car. They were on a completely different track and there was no view of the large power lines. The bushwalker sat down in shock considering what had happened to them before setting out to find their car. They reached the main road, the Strzelecki Highway, near Driftfield in the pines there. This altered their perception of the bush here. This phenomenon is either a time slip or a glitch in the matrix, which is a commonly reported experience, although this is the first case heard of in this area. A lady who lives in Yellow North told me that the times after relatives or close friends have died, about two weeks later, 
they would come and sit with her at her table. They would chat. It would provide great comfort and helped her with her grief. Especially in the cases where her health prevented her from attending their funerals. She only ever sees them for that one visit, but it brings her closure. I love hearing your paranormal experiences. Ghost stories allow for remembering the forgotten, the tumultuous situations in which their lives ended and required a lot of process, then time forgot them. We all leave a mark on the world. Some ghost stories are scary, others are presences. If you'd like to share your story, I'd love to add them to the podcast. Thank you for your ears, dear listeners. I hope the long ghost stories have given you a greater understanding of the mysteries of this area or the chills you've been looking for. Tell us if you've had the nerve to listen on location. HauntedHillsTours.com.au If you want to support the podcast and get early access, add free and participate, you can sign up on Patreon or write a review. Patreon.com forward slash Haunted Hills Reviews help us grow and continue to share these stories with more people. If you like this, please share it with your friends. This podcast was produced, researched, written and narrated by Tegan Dawson on Gunnar Kernay land in Maui, Victoria. Haunted Hills acknowledges the Badalong people of the Gunnar Kernay nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land they operate on. Much of the country they speak of is Aboriginal land, always was, always is. We respect the elders, people, culture, past and present and hope for a positive future on all these lands that was never ceded. Introduction and outro music by Aaron Austin Music. Next time on Hornet Hills, we'll be telling the history of Lakes Entrance, Victoria, which is a holiday resort town, and it always has been. You can follow us for more small towns big stories on the socials, Facebook Hornet Hills Pod, Twitter at Haunt underscore Hills, or our pod website, hornethillstours.com.au. Be kind, thoughtful, stay safe and healthy.